So I want to walk you through basically how a recession will play out with the diagram here. So there's other factors besides the stock market crashing that can cause uh, recessions. But this one, you know, is applicable, especially for the Great Depression. So let's take the scenario stock market crashes. And you have to think, okay, people become very pessimistic about the future. Things look uh, uncertain. And the idea is if things become, pe uh, you know, uncertain or people become pessimistic, that reduces the overall demand in your economy. So there's going to be less demand in your economy. And the aggregate demand curve will shift to the left. So consumption falls, also investment would fall as well. People become pessimistic. Now let's just look at this real quick. So if you are at your long run natural rate of output, like your economy is at its full level of production, and people become pessimistic about the future. Notice in the long run, your output should not change at all. When it comes to what creates goods and services in your economy and what will change the production of goods and services in your economy, being pessimistic wasn't something that was going to change the production in your overall economy. New factories, more workers, new technology, all that can change your natural rate. So your natural rate has stayed exactly the same. So in the long run, you should, you know, there really shouldn't be any change in your natural rate of, of production. So if prices could perfectly adjust, what would happen would be if if there was less demand for the items in the economy because people were scared, all that would happen would be that prices would fall and prices would keep dropping until people would buy up the natural rate of production. So the way to look at this is just because people are scared, that doesn't change your natural resources you have available, your human capital that you have available, your technology that you have av available, your physical capital, your number of workers, none of that has changed. So your ability to produce is still exactly the same. So really there shouldn't be any kind of change in output just because people are scared. How do you get scared people to buy things? Prices go low enough, people will buy up all the output. The problem is with the long run theory here, it relies on perfect price adjustment. And we're saying that in the short run, prices cannot perfectly adjust. So we need to look at a short, short run equilibrium. So the short run equilibrium is right here of an output that is less than your natural rate. So for example, let's say wages were sticky. So wage contracts are locked in. Then there's lower price levels than expected. So firms locked in for their labor cost. The, so that can't change. Let's say the price that they sell their product at is now lower because there's less demand. So they're paying the same wages they were before, but selling their product for a lower, lower price. Profit margins are now smaller. Profitability falls. Less profitable. Sellers are going to produce less items. So um, now we see here this deviation in output. So when you're below your full potential, think about that. This is going to show a recession. So prices being imperfect when it comes to adjusting the short run is what the main theory is saying here of what can cause the recession. So profitability falls for businesses. They don't produce as many goods and services. They don't need as many workers. So your GDP will be below its full potential and your unemployment rate will be, be higher than, than normal. So then the final stage of this theory, if, even if the government did absolutely nothing, the recession would end on, on its own once prices are allowed to change and there's new expectation of lower prices. So let's say what will happen here is you now have a new expectation of lower prices in your economy. Firms then renegotiate labor contracts with their workers and they actually negotiate them at lower wages because price levels overall have, have fallen. And once they negotiate lower wages for workers, then the profit margins return. The short run aggregate supply curve will shift to the right and you'll end up back at, at your natural rate. So let's just walk through it one more time. You had a scenario where aggregate demand shifted to the left because people were scared. In the long run, if, if it was possible, all prices should have just adjusted right away, but maybe wages were sticky in the short term. So since some prices did not change in the short term, short term profitability fell for firms. So then 
they um, were paying the same wage they were paying before, but selling their product for less, so it became less profitable for them to produce the product. Eventually, though, they realized that they're selling their product for a lower price. They negotiate lower wage, uh, lower uh, wages for workers in the form of a lower price. Then what happens is lower expectations for wages increases profitability for the sellers, profitability returns, and the short-run aggregate supply curve shifts to, to the right. So notice that eventually you end up in the long run right over here but this is the short run recession that you, that you see here so you can kind of see the the logic behind uh jiving the long run model and the short run model eventually the short run will become the long run but this is now explaining a recession whereas the long run model if you just had the long run model there would just be lower prices in your economy and there would be no recession. So that's why the long run model kind of fell out of favor for the short term, because it wasn't explaining what was going on uh, specifically during the Great Depression. It wasn't explaining a reduction in output and higher unemployment rates. Now this new model, which is really the Keynesian model for the short term, is now explaining um, the recession.